Well, today is a true Wednesday walkabout where I feel like there is a marked difference from what was going on last week. And I'm going to talk about several things that I think you are going to want to pay attention to. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the products that I used first of all, so it's easy for you to find the link that Stuart will put above. Or you can always go to the description box below or find them on Instagram. So I love Espoma holly tone and you'll notice that it's for evergreens and azaleas i also use it on my camellias so this is basically for anything that likes a rather acidic environment and i really am hoping my encore azaleas now that they're a little bit more established will bloom pretty heavily so yesterday after i did my cleanup and i'll show you how i did it i did sprinkle some holly tone because Stuart, let's just pray <laughs> that we get the rain that they have promised tonight and no ice. Maybe I'd, I'd even take snow, but hopefully some rain. Now I cleaned up a lot of the leafy blanket that was in the entirety of the front beds. And this is one of my favorite things to use you guys. And it's one of these small expandable rakes. Now I like it and mine's really old. So it probably needs a little bit of WD-40. But what it can do is expand to a different length, but also to a different width of the tines. And I really like this because I can be very delicate with it. And I'll show you what I mean once we get out into the yard. And I can also use it. It's not prohibitively heavy, so I can't use it as kind of just a little hand rake. And I can be very delicate and very careful with it as I clean up around tender seedlings. And the tip of bulbs that are coming out and speaking the tips of bulbs that are coming out my pots of bulbs that I was planting my container plantings of all different kinds of bulbs lots of hyacinths daffodils tulips those are starting to come out from the garage because they are definitely showing evidence of sprouting now I'm in zone 7b so these are going to sprout faster and more quickly than if you are farther up north, but it's time for me to bring these out. I'm a little bit nervous that squirrels are going to try digging around in here a little bit, but so far so good. The other reason I pulled these out in addition to them needing the warmth and the sunlight is that they also needed a good watering, so I did that yesterday. The other thing that I did was I really cleaned up my window box. Doesn't it look nice, Stuart? I need positive reinforcement. So I cleaned out all of the leaves that I had blown on there as mulch. I gave it a little bit of an organic granular fertilizer. I cleaned up some of the pansies and you can see in here, Stuart, if you don't mind showing, there, there are all sorts of hyacinths and I can't remember if these are Yellowstone, City of Harlem, I, I can't remember exactly, but these are color blends bulbs. And I think I also have some sailboat daffodils that are coming up. Those are color blends bulbs. And I'll put a link to color blends at the bottom and you can kind of see what they look like. And then also tucked in here are other things that I hope will emerge. I, I cut them back really hard. And that is some kale that is still showing a little, a few signs of life. And also some other, I've got some Montrose white uh, Napata in here. Again, it may or may not come back. If it does not come back, if those things don't come back, then I will tuck some other things in here in their place and in those voids, like some ruby red cabbages, maybe some lettuces or things. But by the time these violas and pansies put on growth and all of the leafy foliage of the bulbs, this will pretty much be consumed. So even though I'm a little bit nervous also that we get a cold spell, even if it gets really pretty cold, you guys, don't be, don't be concerned. Your bulbs that are just starting to show up, they can handle really cold temperatures just fine. In fact, I would be a little bit nervous if I didn't see signs of them right now. So that is my question of the day. If you planted bulbs, are you starting to see evidence of them? Tell me what your zone is and how far up out of the ground are they? Because I have found because it's been so dry that mine have been a little bit slow to erect from the surface. And these, by the way, you guys, these are all my QVC baskets. 
that are part of my QVC line and Stuart and I are in full QVC mode for the next 24 hours. I think we're, I'm even doing, I'm even on a panel in the middle of the night showing off some QVC products. And while the large baskets in particular, while these are back in stock, if you guys, um, and they're on sale, so there's my sales pitch. If you guys, you know, want some of them, then you better get them fast because I don't know how much longer they're gonna be, gonna be available. If I am distracted, it's because there's so much wind going on that I'm just kind of paying attention that nobody is getting. Yeah, yeah, it's, nobody's getting knocked over. The other thing that I'm gonna have to do pretty soon, like I staked this this guy yesterday, this Arbor Vita yesterday, and it is already blown over, so I'm gonna fix it. Um, I've brought out these beautiful hellebores that I got at Trader Joe's, and I'm going to plant them out, hopefully later today, while it is still really, uh, while it's still warm, but before the rain. And remember, these are cool season level lovers, so they will they will like that. But look at how beautiful they are. They still are. They're just really going going strong. And I'll show you where I planted some Trader Joe's specimens that I got last year. So now let's go out into into the garden. Even though some of these have lots of winter burn, I'm not sure if they are really most sincerely dead or they're just faking dead or if branches are dead and the rest is still okay. I will know that as time goes by and it may be that these have to be have to be removed and replanted. And if I do, I may not transplant them with some kind of topiary or something. I might plant them with something that's a little more ebullient, a little uh, more fluffy and cascading. I'm just not really sure right now. What I am going to do is be very respective, or very respectful, I should say, of the notes that I made last year was that I don't want things to get too cluttered and I don't want to have too many pots. So that is the lens through which I am looking at everything this year, including what plants I've got in the greenhouse that may or may not come back with me this year because I may not put them out in the garden. Here are some more little tulips in here. I think these might be smooch a color blends variety that I really like. And then let's come this way. Stuart, if you don't mind going ahead and walking out there and showing people something pretty while I get my, my little rake. So last week when I talked about cleaning up the leafy mulch. I, I, I said that I was doing it in a way where I was prioritizing the removal of the leaves. And what did I mean like that? Well, some things that it is still really mulching and I'm afraid of a, a late hard freeze, then I'm going to leave, maybe not all of them, but I'm gonna leave a good bit of the leaves still around them. So even though I went ahead and I cut back my line bound spirea, I'm gonna go ahead and leave some of this leaf litter in place so that it kind of protects it from the cold. The same with all of my Encore azaleas that I planted back here because they already have buds on them, you guys. And also I think I'm starting to see signs of two camellias from Southern Living Plants that I thought I had lost, they will also benefit from that, um, that holly tone plant food. Now here was my procedure on fertilizing. So one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and remove a lot of the leaves in these areas was because if I threw out that granular holly tone it would just sit on top of that of the leaves and it wouldn't penetrate down in the soil and really do any good to the plants themselves. So I wanted to expose enough of the soil so there would be good fertilizer to soil contact. And that was true if I threw some on my evergreens because it's also good for evergreens or just my azaleas, camellias, my yews, anything like that. I would make sure that I removed some of the leaves and any mulch around that so there would be really good seed, or excuse me, fertilizer to soil contact. 
And then because it's been really, really dry, I took, uh, Stuart, hold on there. I'm not prepared, you guys. I got one of these just very inexpensive circular, this one is metal, I think I got this one at Home Depot or Walmart, uh, sprinklers, and I attached it to my hose end, and then I, in very dedicated areas, really, really deep watered that zone, wherever it was that I had put the fertilizer. Now, I did that for a couple of different reasons, you guys, and I'll try to also put a link to one of these. Number one, it's been really windy. And if I used my regular in-ground irrigation system, it would just blow all over the place and it would just waste water and it wouldn't get dedicated to the ground below. This way I can put it on a low tension, on a low uh, water pressure so that the area uh, of the radius is not real large and it immediately goes down to the root zone and makes soil contact without blowing all over the place. The other reason is just because this is just really flexible for me and I can move it from one zone to another. Now, one thing that I always do when I put a sprinkler on like this so I don't forget to turn it off is I put some kind of sticky note um, either in my kitchen or most frequently I will turn on an alarm on my phone. I will tell Siri to set an alarm or a timer or something of that nature. So when it goes off, I know to turn off my sprinkler so that I don't water excessively. And more importantly, I don't leave it on all night or all day because I've gone on to some other project and I have just forgotten about it. So that is another reason that I use that. Now I also prioritized removing lots of the leaves from my hellebores because I showed you this last week, but look at how heavily they're starting to bloom. Stuart, can you tell a big difference between last week and okay. this week? Look at how heavy, heavily they're starting to bloom. And what that does is it exposes the buds to more sunlight so that they will then come into flower. And look, there's been all sorts of honeybees around, hovering around, actually this entire area. There's another one over there. Plus it also exposes all of these little tiny hellebores that have just gone nuts in here. And I'm gonna be transplanting lots of these to the back in an area that I'll show you. So over here, Stuart, you can see that I cleaned up a lot of the leaves in here that I sprinkled and also kind of raked in that granular fertilizer all in anticipation of the rain that it has promised we're gonna get tonight. But look at this, as I was cleaning up stuff, Stuart, I had another hellebore over here. This was one of mine from Trader Joe's last year. I didn't even realize it was back here. Look at that. Look at all those buds. And I wouldn't have even known that had I not kind of cleaned up this leafy area. Remember, those hellebores, they like the cold weather, so they'll be fine even if it snows. And I think it's supposed to get down in the mid-20s, but I don't think too much colder than that. And that's, a, that's a, okay. My garden can handle that. It's not going to be like it was hopefully last year where it got down to like minus 13. Now, if you'll come this way, you can see that I've... I've installed a couple more stepping stones. I've got a few more to install over this way. And while this isn't very exciting, it nevertheless was something that needed to be done. And I showed you last week how there were a lot of clustered nananandinas that needed to be relocated around in here. And so all of these has, have been transplanted over in here, I watered them in really, really well, and now it will serve to hold in the soil on this slope 
and I also gave the hollies a feed with holly tone and now I get and I don't think it's one thing that's beautiful about this year I don't think these Nana Nandinas have ever turned this beautiful of a reddish purple I think they might be fire powers and there's probably some pink blush from Southern Living, I'm not sure. But when you look at it from this way, you can see there's a kind of a whole strip of red that now looks like it is, from a design perspective, that this is filled in and completed finally after all of the damage from last year. And then I just started cleaning up some of the leaves leaves in this in this area obviously i've got a lot more i'm not taking them off of my little roses here yet i'm going to leave them around that and i will come back a little bit a little bit later to remove that now the other benefit of that is that not only does it provide protection and protective mulch for those things that may start coming out in our wacky roller coaster weather where it's really warm one day and then it's really cool really cold the next so it will not all not only protect them but it also helps me by dividing up all of the work that i need to do so one day i'm concentrating on one area and another day i'm concentrating on another another area and as I told you earlier, this is something that I kind of like to do myself because it not, might expose little seedlings and other things of a delicate nature underneath there that I want to make sure are not destroyed by an overly aggressive power blower. And then it seems like all of a sudden I'm starting to see tulip bulbs coming out from everywhere. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. Stuart, there's that squirrel over there. It looks like it's getting ready to get into some trouble. Um, fortunately, I, do, I have squirrels, but I don't have rabbits, which are, can be really problematic as well. So lots more cleanup to do. The next big thing that I'm going to do in the front yard is I'm going to divide and transplant after the rains, probably next week. I'm going to divide that huge mass of foxglove that's in the back and kind of very, um, in a very rhythmic way, transplant it to other areas a little bit further out in the yard, along with the foxglove that is already growing here. So pretty soon, things are gonna start being really beautiful. One last thing to point out before we move to the back is, Stuart, did you appreciate when you came for Valentine's the other night that I had tucked some of the dried roses from that arrangement we did the other day? and I tucked the dried roses into that wreath from terrain so it looks kind of valentiney. So, you know, I'm just cheap, you guys. <laughs> when I spend money on something, I want it to go through its entire life cycle and serve me well through the entirety of, of my possession of it. <laughs> so I do think it looks pretty from the street, don't you? Yes. Okay, as do, let's leave on this and we'll do a quick run to the back. Look at how pretty those hellebores are looking from the front and finally it's a pop of some color so now let's move to the back Stuart well Stuart I will control this gate so it doesn't slam in your face the wind doesn't slam it in your face as you're walking through but look here here's two of my large QVC pots and I'm so excited because these are filled with tulips I think these are these are color blends I think they're they might be Dordogne I need to go back and look at my records because my memory fails me and one thing I like that I like to do here's a tip you guys Mr. Bunny will be going out pretty soon Stuart is when I plant bulbs in pots so that squirrels can't dig, a lot of times I will either encase and put in the entire pot into these mesh bags that these color blends tulips come in, or I will use them and kind of secure them, whether the pot is in the garage or outside, <clears throat> secure them with, with something to keep the squirrels from digging in them because they don't like their, their little claws to get caught up in that, that mesh. So more stuff is going on back, back here. I'm really going to be trading out, I'm gonna have fewer larger specimens back here on my back porch along with my topiaries. And here's a test. I wanted to see if I could get hellebores to grow in pots. And look here, Stuart. 
these have some blooms starting on them. So as long as I can grow hellebores and they are happy in my garden, I will plant them everywhere because I do love them so. Same thing back here. I feel like I'm being repetitive about telling you the things that I'm doing and I do wanna know what kind of leaf cleanup you're doing in your own gardens. As much as I love my trees, I will tell you <laughs> that trees create a lot of work. And, and I adore these redbud trees in the back, but I am really getting tired of cleaning up all of these little dried seed heads because they are everywhere. But when they bloom pink this spring, I won't mind. Um, lots of bulbs coming up in here. And this is what I call my minor bulb garden. Here are some of the hyacinths that I had growing in the house. This one was in one of those hyacinth vases. I'm gonna plant these out here and they will do just fine. And they will come up. You can see over here, Stuart, you're on, thank you. Um, over here they are coming up and these are all ones that I planted. I need to get that out of your way, Stuart. I am trying, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to knock you over. I just get so enthusiastic, don't I? That I'm not always careful. And by the way, uh, if you are new to this channel, there are so many new people. Um, and first of all, if you're new to the channel, welcome. But Stuart is my photographer, he is my business partner, and he's my best buddy. And if I have to suffer and stay up tonight at midnight to be on a panel on QVC, then he will too. <laughs> you suffer along with me, don't you? Yes, I think Hub's invited you to just stay the night in the guest bedroom, so because we've got to do it at six o'clock in the morning too. Um, okay, <laughs> I know, really. This, we suffer for our art, don't we? we do. This whole area, notice that I have not taken off any of the leafy mulch from all of these hydrangeas. I'm going to assume that probably they, these, the, those that bloom on, on old wood probably got nipped, but just in case. Oh, look over here, Stuart. Look, there's green coming out there. Now, whether or not that'll produce any flowers, I don't know. But there is some green. We'll see if it's still green tomorrow if we get a really hard freeze. That wind blew some trash back in there, Stuart. We'll get that later. This is another area that I'll probably start cleaning up some of the leaves because there's some little daffodils in here and also the ajuga will start blooming purple. So before too long, this is probably the next area I will tackle to clean up a lot of these leaves. Uh, one of the reasons for leaving, uh, I've got a combination of hydrangeas in here that grow on new growth, on new wood and old wood. And one of the reasons that I leave the flower heads on sometimes is to protect any of that new tender growth that's coming out. The flower heads kind of protect them a little bit from, a little bit from frost. I'm also looking now for things that may have experienced frost heave. In other words, the, the contraction and expansion of the soil as it freezes and, and then thaws out, kind of heaves plants out of the ground. So I'm looking for signs of that and tucking any of those guys back in. Here's more pots with tulips in them and those are starting to show some signs of life. And then yesterday, back here, I, I really watered everything very, very well because other than that snow, we have not had, had any moisture at all in three months, Stuart, three or f almost four months. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you one more thing. You've probably seen pictures of my garden when I had an arbor here. There's a lot of pictures over the span of time in my, in my new book. But there used to be just a mammoth old blush climbing rose here that was here for many, many years, probably 25 years. And a good bit of the original trunk, which by that time was this big, it got rose rosette disease and I had to take it out. But happily, some of these shoots rooted themselves 
into the earth forming new growth and so I am hoping that these will grow and turn into another healthy climbing old blush that will bloom and because it's not planted in exactly the same area hopefully it will not suffer the same demise so that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping anyway and boy Stuart am I anxious to get in there and start working on that boxwood but it will come soon enough it's like hurry up and wait hurry up and wait hurry up and wait uh, anything I didn't cover, Stuart, that you've noticed that's gone on back here? I've got a few more Nandina berries that I need to cut back. Lots of alliums are coming up in the back. Oh, I do have another, one more question for you guys. I want your opinion. I planted both of those emerald green arborvitas at the same time. And one just is growing so much faster than the other and it bothers me that they are not the same size so i'm considering this spring when they start putting on active growth to prune the tall one back so that it's more in scale with the smaller one and i'd like your opinion on that i've tried to help the smaller one catch up by feeding and watering it more but it's just more of a slow poke and so instead of having, um, I don't know, I just, I would prefer that they are more symmetrical. So let me know what your opinion is on that. If I should prune this one down a little bit more in, in scale to give me a little bit more symmetry through here. So that is my last and final question. Thank you for your service. I get so much good advice for you guys. Make sure to answer the question of the day below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share if this, um, if you know other budding gardeners, new gardeners that might learn something from this. And most importantly, thank you for joining me on this Wednesday walkabout. Well, here you go. Here's my outfit of the day. Starting with my sunglasses, even though it's kind of cloudy out, I have them on primarily because it's so windy. I don't want things blowing in my contacts. These are Ray-Bans and I got them off of Poshmark. My earrings are simple, thick silver hoops. I got these from Eden, but if I can find a link on Amazon to something similar, I will include that. My top is uh, Any Day from Target. I got it on sale last week. And and I've just got um, just a simple white t-shirt on underneath it. Uh, I do have a fashion question of the day. Do you think I need a manicure? <laughs> Stuart, do you think I need a manicure? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a testament as is this. I've got evidentiary uh, proof that I do do my own gardening and I have really been intensively gardening for the past couple of days. So fear not, I'm gonna go get a manicure. I think this afternoon is a treat to myself. My belt belonged to my sons. My britches are Calvin Klein high-waisted jeans that I got, uh, I believe, from Goodwill. And these boots that I love that I've had forever, these came from Sundance. And let me tell you, one of the down sides I noticed this morning of working out is that my calf muscles are getting bigger and these are a little bit harder to zip up than they used to be. Um, so, you know, no, I guess there's a cost to everything. So there you go. There's my outfit of the day.